right, everybody. Welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. As we do on Mondays, we have um, Ask Me Anything sessions with different upstream projects or community leaders. And so this week, we have brought together the team from Project Quay. Um, we're going to get a little bit of an introduction from Daniel Messier. Um, and then we'll have it open for Q&A, and Tom McKay is going to lead the Q&A. But we have a number of folks here on the call from the engineering teams from Quay and Claire, which are now part of Project Quay. So um, please queue up your questions in the chat, and we will um, gather them. If you're on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or in the Twitch stream, we'll aggregate them and bring them here as well. So ask where you live, and um, we'll see if we can get them all answered. So with that, um, Daniel, take it away. Give us a little intro to what Project Quay is and where we're at today. Sure thing, Diane. Thank you very much for having us. Um, welcome to this uh, brief overview of uh, Project Quay, the upstream open source project. Um, if you haven't heard about Quay, here's a short little recap of the history of Quay, um, which is pretty interesting. It was actually the first private registry uh, on the internet, so it had the ability to store private or offer private container repositories even before um, uh, the Docker registry and container index at the time had. And it was basically launched as a service, um, as a SaaS service with Quay.io and an on-prem version of Quay Enterprise um, by a company called DevTable, which was um, eventually acquired by CoreOS, which, as you all know, uh, got incorporated into Red Hat. And uh, since then, it's uh, an, still an open source project or has been open sourced um, after the fact and um, is also an official Red Hat product. So um, Quay as a technology and also um, as a SaaS um, offering has quite a history on its back and it remains one of the most, um, um, or the, the, one of the largest and uh, most busiest um, public registries next to um, uh, Docker Hub. Um, and it's also available as an on-prem version for enterprise customers or, or for upstream users to install in their own environments. Um, Quay as a project um, has been open source late last year. So we are actually um, um, not that long with the source code on GitHub and uh, all the community collaboration behind that, but it's generated a significant and impressive track record, track record already since then. Um, the mission of the project is um, quite straightforward. Um, Quay is allowing you, allowing you to build, um, store, secure, and distribute your applications in the form of containers reliably at scale. And um, there are two important things here, which is um, secure and security, as well as reliability at scale. And these um, aspects come from the fact that um, Quay is an open source technology, runs the Quay.io offering. In fact, all the code base um, is shared between the on-prem product and the uh, Quay.io offering, and all the um, new uh, features go into Quay.io first, right? So we basically test at the scale of Quay.io with tens of thousands of users and hundreds of thousands of API requests each day um, before we actually release uh, this into, um, into a product. Uh, but it's all coming from the um, GitHub open source project, and um, that's where the community now lives. So it's fully open source and available for various footprints, both including on-premise, public cloud, as well as various um, uh, 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 cloud service offerings. Um, one interesting aspect of uh, Quay as a technology is that given its history, that it pretty much started at the same time when um, Docker uh, started to become um, more widely adopted, is that it is one of the few registries that actually allows um, for a very broad range of Docker client compatibility. So we go all the way back to version 0.7. So you can also use Docker clients that even precede the V2 protocol implementation to um, use Quay in order to pull and push images. But we're also looking at the new stuff. So we have our eyes and, uh, and the ears all on all things uh, OCI. Um, we are basically already an OCI reference implementation with Quay. We are uh, giving uh, people using Quay early access to features like OCI MIME types, as well as uh, OCI Fire Artifacts back. And um, maintainers of the Quay project are actually um, part of that community body, right? Um, if you were to sum up the strength of Quay as uh, a project, 
is it's really about um, providing secure access to um, uh, container images, which drive containerized um, application architectures and container orchestration platforms. It does that with performance and scalability in mind. Um, Quay is, again, one of the largest um, public registries available next to Docker Hub, and it focuses a lot of automation, so it's perfectly um, available and to integrate in CI/CD system. Um, I said that um, Quay itself um, was just open sourced more or less um, a little bit over half a year ago, but already since then we have seen quite an upstream uh, of adoption. So um, Quay is uh, very active on GitHub and so is Claire, which is actually the project that um, implements security uh, vulnerability scanning. So uh, Claire is uh, open source since um, a little bit longer than Quay and is also used outside of Quay, but um, all the Claire maintainers are actually on the Quay project and they're also on this call today. So if you have any questions for Claire, uh, please do bring those up as well. Um, so what's new in Project Quay? Um, if you haven't been following, um, let's do a quick recap of the most recent release, which we introduced a couple of weeks ago, uh, Quay Pre Pre. Um, where we put a major focus on completely overhauling Claire effectively um, and um, introducing the result as Claire before in Tech Preview um, with uh, Quay Free Free. Um, so Claire before um, predominantly adds support for programming language packages um, to do vulnerability analysis. So Claire always had the ability to check the operating system package managers uh, for vulnerabilities and um, use the signature databases to uh, tag images that have known vulnerabilities, including the severity and some information about how to fix them. Um, but on top of that, we are starting to add support for popular uh, package managers uh, for programming languages. First one actually for V4 is Python. Uh, the other big theme is that um, we see close integration with the OpenShift and OKD platform so that if you run Quay with this platform or even on this platform, you have a first class user experience. And that's um, enabled by uh, various operators, and one of them is the bridge operator, which uh, got introduced as a supported feature with uh, Quay Free Free um, and is also making its way into um, the official repository. Um, this gives you tight integration for workflows between uh, OpenShift and Quay so that things like namespaces and repositories um, or uh, service account tokens, the robot tokens are kept in sync, that you automatically have permissions to push and pull to your little um, car of the world in Quay from OpenShift. And you can also use um, image streams and uh, OpenShift builds in conjunction with Quay and get the familiar user experience that you had with the internal registries. Uh, we also added a couple of smaller improvements across the board. Um, things like LDAP filtering help users with that uh, kind of uh, authentication backend to be more precise about which users they want to uh, see in Quay. Um, we have some features that actually trigger down from Quay.io, like uh, forwarding um, larger volumes of logging data to Elasticsearch. Um, and we are also introducing some experimental features. One of them is Helm v3 chart support, which is based on the OCI artifacts pack. So um, if you enable two experimental flags, one on the Helm side and one on the Quay side, you can actually also use Quay to uh, push and pull Helm charts as well. Um, quick update on what's going to be the focus for uh, in the near, mid, and long-term future. Um, in general, um, as Quay now being an upstream community uh, project, we have the same um, open source upstream driven innovation model that um, all Red Hat uh, projects have. So we are really looking for feedback like um, these kind of AMA sessions from you in order to uh, get um, ideas on what we can improve, where we can add in terms of integrations and features uh, throughout the product and then um, start making those available on Quay.io in a canary uh, fashion and then make them available to the paying customers uh, with the uh, productized uh, version of Quay. Um, going forward, um, we pursue three main focus areas. Uh, one is that we want to get closer to the platform we are running on and the platform we are most likely to get used with a lot, which is uh, OKD. Uh, upstream or OCP uh, downstream. 
So um, there's a lot of potential for um, a very um, close integration in the developer workflow as well as administrative workflow um, to know about events uh, regarding container images that happen in Quay for those to be able to trickle down into OpenShift. So we want to make these um, things much more visible and much more useful to users um, so they have a very natural workflow between these two um, projects. Um, in general, focus on day two operations of actually running Quay um, on top of Kubernetes um, and on top of OpenShift is a, a big focus in the future too. Um, we are essentially rewriting the uh, Quay um, operator, which was formerly known as the Quay setup operator, um, to be uh, much more future-proof for uh, enhancements and also gets the ability to not only install Quay, but to keep it updated through its um, life cycle. And then the third part is um, um, enhancements to the registry itself, as well as to Claire. Um, so on the Claire side, we definitely want to add more um, package managers from programming languages uh, in the future um, in order to increase the coverage of um, security scanning of images. Um, we want to finalize um, MIME type support as well as um, OCA artifact support, um, as well as then um, enhance some of the uh, more advanced features in Quay like repo mirroring. Um, this is the more detailed roadmap. I'm not going to talk to uh, every point here, um, but one thing that we are currently working on um, quite intensely is actually updating the Quay code base uh, to be Python V3 compatible. Um, so that's going to take up most of the bandwidth on the Quay team for the upcoming uh, pre four release towards the end of the year. And at the same time, we are also um, redesigning the Quay operator with the main goals that it can actually manage Quay in spite of updates and it can also provide um, the required databases um, in a, a useful fashion to Quay. Um, we are also looking to add builder support for OCP. This just um, you know closely missed um, the last March window, um, but um, it's going to be in 3.4. Um, Claire v4 um, has um, two big goals. One is um, notifications, um, which is going to be um, rewritten from scratch as well as part of Claire v4 being a completely new code base, and also having the ability to get um, vulnerability data uh, from uh, different sources. Um, which is primarily driving the air gap uh, deployment case. So if you want to run Claire in a disconnected environment with no network access, you need some sort of um, mechanism to um, constantly feed updates to the vulnerability database. And uh, that's what Claire before HGA will deliver. Um, I think I want to leave it at that in terms of an outlook and um, open it up for uh, Q&A. Great, well, thank you for the update. A um, couple of other things things um, have popped in. One, I just wanted to make, um, just be clear about what the difference was between the Quay bridge operator and the project Quay operator that's in operator hub.io. Um, someone want to address that just quickly? Yeah, sure. So um, the Quay operator in um, operator hub.io is really the operator that maintains Quay itself, right? So that's the operator that basically gives you the Quay deployment as a service. And we've just called it Quay operator these days, even though we used to call it Quay setup operator, but it's really the component um, that is responsible for the life cycle of Quay on a Kubernetes cluster, right? Um, the Quay bridge operator was specifically created to integrate and running Quay instance with OpenShift clusters. Um, OpenShift also comes with an integrated registry and has, uh, and has some extensions that are um, only available with the integrated registry by default. And the bridge operator opens this up to be used uh, with Quay as well. Um, so the most predominant features here are support for image streams as well as um, automated deployments um, when builds in Quay have produced a new image artifact. The one operator you use to install Quay, the other uh, is to integrate it with OpenShift. Okay, and then um, Mohan um, asked from the YouTube channel, in Quay 3.3 for LDAP, will it be possible to control the level of nesting groups? 
I don't think we have that ability right now. I have seen the RFE for that, but maybe someone from the engineering team can provide more background. So yeah, there is a, oh, this is Tom McKay. Uh, there is a, uh, a JIRA issue where we track our issues uh, upstream and downstream for that feature. It is not on our list of things to do in the coming months, um, but it has been asked by a number of people. So it has not gone unnoticed, but I wouldn't expect it in, certainly not the 3.3, which is in Zstream right now, and probably not the next release 3.4, which we are actively working on currently. And Malid is asking, um, would it be possible to abstract the Mira pass-through for developers on-prem that is a developer asks for an image in pod manifest, OpenShift, Kubernetes, will pass it to Quay on-prem if not there. It pulls out of the internet from Quay.io or any other container registries. And I'm going to unmute Will, uh, Waleed so he can follow up on this too, but it's is there a quick answer to that? Uh, maybe Daniels can correct me, but I don't think that doing a, a pull through cache like that is not on our uh, short-term plans. Well, Lee, did I get that right? I have just unmuted you if you want to. Yeah, to supplement that, um, it's something that we have been thinking about, but it's not um, scheduled for the next release. Um, but it's something we are tracking and we are aware of. Yeah. And, um, yeah, definitely coming in from multiple angles. Well, he couldn't unmute himself. Sorry about that. Um, the gentleman on um, YouTube asked a follow-up question, LDAP question, in Teams and membership um, directory synchronization, will it be possible to add multiple LDAP groups? So, Joey, do you remember what the current level of feature in LDAP is? by the current level of feature? Well, I mean, I remember I can add multiple um, search terms. I don't know the LDAP terms. Right now, you can only bind a team to a single LDAP group. Nothing in theory would preclude us from checking multiple groups, but it is not currently a feature. It's a request. We'd have to add it onto the roadmap. Gotcha, yeah. So uh, if you're the questioner, uh, definitely open a JIRA issue uh, with as much details as you can, and uh, we'll give it a look. Right. So Elite had an earlier question at the very beginning of the whole conversation. He queued up one on restricted network air-gapped environments and support updates to vulnerability scanners databases via periodic updates allowing other standards other than Claire. That's like a bunch of questions mashed into one. But um, mm -hmm. you want to tease that out there, Tom, and figure out? I can answer that. Um, the vulnerability updates for AirGap are a plan for Claire v4. Claire v4 is targeted for uh, October to come into GA. Um, as part of that, it is being designed explicitly for the idea that you would be able to load in the updates as opposed to today where it's expected that Claire can download those updates. Um, as for different security scanners, nothing in Quay is Claire specific. Any security scanner that speaks the current or upcoming, they're different, version of the Quay security scanner API, of which today it's Claire v2 um, for the current one and Claire v4 for the upcoming can be used with Quay without any additional configuration on the Quay side. You just point it to the security scanner. Um, there just has not been any community agreement yet on what a registry security scanner API should look like. So every registry today has a different API, but there has been some work done by various external uh, security scanner providers to integrate with Claire's API. I believe, in fact, uh, one provider has a working prototype of a small proxy server that actually will let Quay talk to their security scanner. I don't recall what it's called at the moment, though, so I don't want to answer incorrectly. Um, but nothing precludes anyone from using a different security scanner with Quay today, except for API compatibility on the security scanner side, and that can be done via shim. 
So there's one follow-up question. Um, which other scanners use the Claire API? As I said today, as far as I know, there was one security scanner that had a shim prototype, but I don't know off the top of my head what it's called. None of the other ones do today. Nothing precludes them from doing so. It's mm -hmm. just no one has gotten around to doing it. Um, it's also not complicated at all. The Quay Security Scanner API is very, very simple. Uh, and before we go to more questions, um, Diane, maybe I can share the slide deck or who sh yeah. who's sharing now? Um, Daniel is, but you can just take it away from him. Okay. Uh, and you'll notice Daniel's slides uh, were red and mine are blue, the Project Quay color. I think you would call me the uh, community champion <laughs> for Project Quay. Uh, and I just wanted to point out real quickly, uh, these are great questions. Uh, we do have an email list. Um, it's a Google group, Quay-SIG. Uh, and we are on Freenode IRC. I know there's a lot of chat tools out there, uh, Slack and Discord, and uh, but with all of them, um, IRC seems the, the one that lives the longest. Uh, and then again, as mentioned, uh, we do have the GitHub uh, organization. So the majority of our repos are under that, the Quay org. Uh, there is one, uh, the Quay operator, which is the Quay setup operator. That's still in a uh, Red Hat community of practice repo, but that'll be moving over to Quay as well. So feel free to explore there. Uh, and the repos have varying policies in terms of issues. So for example, the Claire repo, the Claire community communicates uh, most frequently through uh, GitHub issues. Um, we do not have GitHub issues enabled on most of our Quay specific repos. Uh, instead, we use uh, issue tracking through Jira, which I linked there as well. We use the same tracking for both uh, upstream, so Project Quay, and downstream Red Hat Quay. Uh, and so if you want to really see the roadmap and what's being worked on actively, uh, it's all there for you to, to look at. Um, and again, all of our code that is for Red Hat Quay, as well as Quay.io, as well as Project Quay, all lives stream and is accessible on the various branches if you want to check it out. Uh, the upstream release pattern is that we release every uh, sprint, which is three weeks for us, um, and which leads me to our our next thing. So the master branch of Project Quay, we are converting from Python 2 to Python 3, uh, which is a significant amount of work, if anyone is familiar with Python. Um, but we're the, in the benefit that we do have an extensive, uh, both internal Red Hat QE team, as well as extensive unit tests uh, and integration tests. Uh, so the, the largest portion of the conversion is really uh, checking the updated package versions. So we're in Python 2, we might be using an older version of an integration package. Uh, we've updated that. So, and as you can see, there's a lot of integration points. So LDAP, uh, all the storage engines, all, all sorts of flavors of things. There's a lot to be uh, tested and reviewed. Um, and we'll put this in the top of the readme, uh, information about our bug bash here and the uh, rewards for our community's hard work in helping us with this. But we hope to see you on IRC and on the email list and uh, fixing and raising issues. It's a significant effort to do this, um, so any and all help uh, is much appreciated. And we'll socialize this a little bit too as well. And I think Bill Dietelbach has got a t-shirt design up his sleeve as a reward. So um, hopefully we can showcase that too sometime soon and tempt you all to use your Python skills um, and help us out here because that's really uh, where the community's at. The other um, piece of information, if you don't know too as well, we've got an effort on to bring um, Project Quay to the CNCF um, and have made a pull request and are, are working our way through the, CN the Cloud Native Computing Foundation's um, review process for uh, bringing a project into incubation. So that's 
that's been um, in the works for a while and um, it's wandering its way through some SIG reviews. But um, I'll put in the chat the, the link to the pull request. If you're interested um, in following through uh, or commenting on that, uh, please let us know or just do so. And um, we'd be happy to have your support and also your feedback on that process as well. So um, that's, that, that's where we're at with the CNCF at the moment. Um, and hopefully you'll see us on that beautifully complex cncflandscape.io diagram sometime in the not too distant future. That'll, that'll also help raise visibility for, for this project and also give us another lots more options. And so I do want to take a moment and have um, either Lewis or Hank, either one of you are welcome, but uh, sort of tell us why there is a Claire V4. So as we know, Claire V2 is the version that's out there now integrated with uh, Red Hat Quay. If you use Quay uh, built from the master branch or one of our recent sprint releases, uh, there is an option to enable V4. And in fact, on the master branch now, the uh, Claire V4 is the default. So Lewis or Hank, which of you want to tell me a little bit about why there's a Claire V4? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, Claire v4 is a reimagination of Claire v2's original architecture. Uh, there were some issues with the original architecture, which um, we addressed most of them evolving around performance. And um, there was also some data model issues, which didn't allow us to really connect the dots between certain package types like binary and source. All this is now built into the data model. And in the performance side, we really looked at basically how Claire V2 was pulling down images, how it was analyzing them, did most of the work in memory. Uh, we moved that to actually be buffered on disk, uh, which will actually wind up being more performant because some of these layers can get rather large. You don't want to do all that work in memory. Um, and then we basically re-architected um, the actual library, which does most of the work, into a repository called Claire Core. Um, that was for an effort to remodel and also to kind of promote easier integration, easier um, contribution from the community. So you can actually take a look at that in Claire Core. We have had some outside contributions. Everything is well documented now, and it should be a little bit easier to just jump in and add things to the code base. It's a little bit more difficult in Clear V2. Um, and you know, there's a couple other things. Um, Clear V2 didn't really consider content addressable uh, layers and artifacts. The content addressability is the fact that if I have a hash for an object, it will always reference that object. So we made that a first class citizen in order to really fortify the reduction of work that Claire has to do when performing the scanning on the same images and same layers. Um, that's a first class citizen that got brought into the you know, Docker specifications after image IDs. Uh, so it's not like Claire v2 ignored that. It just wasn't a thing at that point. So we kind of worked that into the solution. Um, yeah, there's there's um, quite a bit that has changed, mostly from taking a look at Claire v2. You know, when Claire v2 was developed, it was developed at the onset of a lot of those technologies. So it benefits you, us a lot to take a look. Can you tell me a bit about the, um, I know in Claire v4, there's now language support. What does that mean? Yeah, so there's nothing that's stopping us from kind of, uh, the, the new architecture jumps into basically being able to scan anything off the file system itself. So now that you know we kind of set up uh, this layout, we were able to implement you know Python scanning fairly easily, and more language packages will come. Um, but yeah, we basically just have a core set of components that, when they're implemented, uh, they just kind of fall into the order of the application. So doing that for Python, doing that for pip, it all becomes fairly imaginable uh, with 
not too much code changes, which is what we kind of wanted to accomplish. So right now we support Python and pip scanning. Uh, we're working through two rather big features, air gap and notifications. And I hope that once we get through those, then we will be able to attack more of the language package scanning. It's actually one of the things I'm more excited about. I think it can add a lot to the solution. So I want to, you know, as soon as possible, whether it comes from contribution or not, uh, I think that it should be like, um, you know, like a major point on our radar. Nice. Uh, and as a reminder, again, we build uh, upstream community releases every three weeks, uh, and that includes Claire v4. So if you are not wanting to build the image yourself, uh, we provide those every three weeks. So, Diane, any more questions for us? Uh, not at the moment. I'm wondering if um, we can get some more insights into the, the roadmap uh, from from Joey and from the others um, and Lewis. Well, again, our, our focus is for the coming summer months, um, really the Python 3 work in Quay itself, um, and then Claire v4, all of its nice features, and then really focusing on uh, what we're internally calling the next generation Quay operator. And maybe if Alec is on, Alec, are you with us today? I don't think he is on. Okay, so Alec is our uh, lead engineer on the Quay operator. Uh, the current version of the Quay setup operator uh, was written in conjunction with uh, Red Hat Consulting and a customer, um, and they graciously allowed it to be open source work. Uh, and that's what's uh, shipped now with 3.3, with, uh, with Red Hat Quay 3.3. Um, there is work in re-architecting that to be more operator-like, uh, and that repo, again, exists up on our GitHub. And there's some back-end tooling uh, we're using called Customize. Uh, it's very Kubernetes-friendly. Um, so there's a lot of work going on there. Uh, one, to make sure the transition from the existing operator to the new next-generation operator uh, goes smoothly, but also to uh, ensure that we capture all the user personas uh, that we envision. And this really is focused on the day two operations as well. So the current operator really installs, but doesn't further manage. Uh, but we're lo looking to raise the maturity level of the operator uh, to include things like upgrades and uh, day two operations. So that's, that really is the, the roadmap for our team. So there, there was, yeah, there was something um, on the roadmap that Daniel put up there around um, extending the operator to support databases. Uh, and I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about what that means, and, and maybe Daniel can throw the roadmap picture back up and we can talk about some of those things. Uh, sure, I can unshare. Daniel, if you want to share. Yeah, I'm going to take a little bit quick. So I think you're referring to the um, third and fourth bullet point of um, the Quay roadmap. Um, so uh, yeah, so like Tom mentioned, today the operator um, actually deploys um, Quay, um, and it can actually also deploy uh, all the um, immediate dependencies of Quay, um, which is an in-memory cache based on Redis, as well as a uh, SQL database that um, is either MySQL or Postgres. So we deployed Postgres today with, with the operator. So we, we want to make that a little bit more, um, let's say, opinionated. So um, it becomes, on the one hand, less customizable, uh, but also more maintainable uh, for us. So um, the more options we give people in order to um, obviously change the way uh, way is deployed by the operator, the more complex the operator code obviously gets, right? Um, and complexity is the um, enemy of all of all updates, right? So um, if we really want to go 
into a world where a Quay operator is essentially like um, Quay is a service running wherever your Kubernetes cluster is running. Um, we need to have um, very robust update capabilities, and that may actually include updating not only Quay itself, but also the version of Redis that we are using or uh, the version of Postgres that we are using in order to enable certain new features, right? So um, in order to do that with the operator and live up to the expectation of the operator actually giving you a, um, uh, a robust Quay deployment and maintaining that over time, um, we, we are looking at um, Going down the way um, you can um, actually um, deploy the database with Quay to something that um, is easier to incorporate by the uh, by the operator. So and that's all in order to help uh, the operator to be able to manage um, uh, update lifecycle. So that when you have uh, Quay 3.4 installed and Quay 3.5 is released, you can actually use the operator to just change a little uh, version spec um, in the custom resource. And then the Quay operator will notice that and will actually take uh, over um, reconciling your release and updating it uh, in the way um, uh, we are doing uh, Quay updates. So that whole orchestration is basically uh, taken out of your hands and done automatically with all safeguards in place, less potential for human errors. And that may basically mean that what you can customize in terms of um, the database getting deployed is a little bit reduced in order to make that uh, a robust experience. Um, but of course, we still have the ability to have um, you provide a database for us or use a managed database um, if you're in a cloud environment, um, and that will remain available. Um, so that's just um, a bigger uh, a part of a bigger plan to make the operator uh, really capable of these day two operations that we're looking for, so that you can really just solely rely on the operator to not only install, but also update your Quay deployment. Cool, thanks. We have an, another question came in and asking if you could elaborate more on the repo organization team level structure. Can it be more flexible, more levels? He's a new user and he finds it limiting. For example, how should I provide to my end users the images from upstream Quay.io CoreOS, such as Claire and Quay? Yeah, so right now, uh, the, the hierarchy, the levels that you can have in a a name are limited to that, so organization and repo, and then your 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 tags. So, in terms of flexibility, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the flexibility you're you're stuck with. Does that answer your question? I know he's, he's, it's not flexible at all, is what he's saying. So yeah, it, it doesn't and, sound really flexible either. So, but that's so the the um, the schema, the spec does allow for multi levels of hierarchy in names. Um, there aren't a lot of registries. I I can't think of one off the top of my head that supports any a, a number of levels. So we do not at this time. I'll comment on that a little further. The reason we don't support it at this time is because it's not supported in the Docker v1 protocol and as part of our commitment to full backwards and forwards compatibility, we can't support it. If and when we formally deprecate uh, version one of the protocol, which will likely happen at some point in, in the future um, because its usage has been dropping, then we can investigate adding hierarchical support, but we will likely not unless something changes, we will likely not be allowing you to set permissions at different levels of the hierarchy. It will be a naming convention, as for which is what, in fact, most um, custom implementations that do have quote-unquote hierarchy actually do. Um, in terms of how to allow customers to access things, the, the, the current um, promoted solution is you create a robot account per customer, or if you don't have a problem with sharing the robot, excuse me, credentials, you give one robot account to all your customers and you just give permissions to that robot account in the particular set of repositories that the uh, customer will have access to. So we ourselves actually used to do this at CoreOS um, and it worked really well um, and it was really easy to track as well since we did a robot account per customer. So we would just, as those customers would sign up for products, we our account system would just add that user's robot via the Quay API to the particular set of repositories that, con that contain that product, or, or, or rather that form that product. And then if their subscription lapsed, same deal, we would remove the robot 
and then Quay's permission model would, will take it from there. The other benefit of using a robot account as well is that it means that the users don't have access to the Quay UI even to see things. Um, and so it's purely a poll robot and it's a credential. Um, so they can't just use it for other things. It's tied specifically to your organization. Right. So well, lead. I take it you haven't figured out how to unmute yourself, um, so you can't follow up to that. But if you do, let us know and we'll get you in. Um, yeah, he's already tried. There's a bug in the system. There's a bug in the matrix. Um, so there was one other question or ask for a little bit more on um, builders on OCP and what that entangles or. I can um, yeah, you go ahead, Bill. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Bill Dettelback. I'm the engineering manager for Quay. Um, and uh, yeah, just I think that's one of the things we didn't talk about too much, but I think um, it's, a, it's a feature that we've got slated for the next ma minor release for 3.4. Um, a lot of folks who use Quay on-premise don't realize that there's actually a facility for builds. Um, if you use Quay.io, you're, you're probably very familiar with it. Um, we don't have too much uptake, folks running uh, Quay in-house uh, with the builders. Um, some of that, I think, is because the, the the setup has been um, somewhat manual. It wasn't really designed um, up front to, to work uh, directly on Kubernetes. Um, actually, the, the builders are the first thing we moved over to Kubernetes when we started to retarget um, uh, uh, Quay.io over to OpenShift. Um, we've been running the builders now on, on, on OpenShift for about eight months or so. Um, and so we decided that it was time to, to productize that, bring that back into the product. So with, um, with the next major release, uh, you'll be able to run the builders now pretty easily on top of a Kubernetes um, orchestrator. Uh, we've done some, some internal changes in conjunction with the Python 3 migration as well. We've taken the opportunity to obviously update the build manager code in the Quake container to Python 3. And while we've got the, the hood up on the car, we're, um, we're swapping out some stuff like an old RPC framework that we used before um, for gRPC. And we're trying to simplify the code as much as possible. Um, we're also bumping up the version of the VM that we use for the actual um, builds inside the pods to a more supported version. It was on container Linux. Uh, we're moving that over to Fedora Core OS, I believe. So anyway, I thought it would be worth to um, just call that out as, as a new feature. I think with the introduction of builders on OCP and Kubernetes, um, it should be very simple to stand those up as a new build facility uh, for on-prem customers. So, And if there's detailed questions on that, I see Kenny's on. Kenny's actually doing the work, so I will defer the hard questions to him. Any there? And if so, I apologize for un here. There you go, Kenny. You have something to add. I think we're having some difficulties with the mute and unmute button today, so it's a little quieter than it should be on this call. Um, so there you go. Well, then hopefully by 2022, um, we'll be changing the vulnerability whitelisting to either whatever the new standard terminology is for whitelisting and have it be allow listing or deny listing or whatever comes up um, in the nomenclature. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. One interesting aspect of builders is that um, once you you think about this being something that's available on premise, um, and you deploy Quay on something like OpenShift or OKD, um, you get to see how the ecosystem comes together in a larger picture, right? So you may have heard about a upstream project called Tecton, which um, provides a Kubernetes native experience to um, running continuous delivery. And um, in that construct of Tecton, you have um, abstract concepts of uh, tasks groups of tasks building a pipeline, right? So you could um, easily see that this ties um, back into um, the builder concept of uh, Quay, which allows you to actually build, um, you know, container image artifacts based on external triggers, either, either via the API or uh, by integration uh, with um, source code management systems, right? 
so that in turn, um, in the long run, Quay could use something like Tecton to actually carry out this task um, and uh, use another Kubernetes uh, service um, to describe how that's going to happen, right? So I think there are some really interesting um, opportunities there in the future as um, these services are maturing. And um, you may know that um, our group here at Red Hat is also very invested in the Tecton project upstream. Someone had also asked um, if there was a deep dive on Clay, uh, Clay, right, Claire 4 um, available from a past Commons briefing. And I, I don't have one yet, so we'll probably have to get Lewis and someone to do that deep dive on Claire 4 um, sooner than later, uh, if that's, that's if you're willing. Um, and yeah, if you want some, just something to hold you over, the, there's a repository. I'll put the link in the chat too, but we have worked on basically formal documentation in the Claire Core repository. It's a little bit more of like an upstream resource, but it does carry a lot of weight as far as explaining how everything works. So I'll put that into the chat. All right, I'll share, I'll share it via the screen. So if... So in, in terms of Claire and community contribution, what are you, what are you looking for, Lewis, in, in the short term and long term for, for people to give you feedback on or to help you with? Yeah, I mean, one of the big things that come to mind, like we had some great contributions from VMware who added their own OS support. Language support would be great. I think that any contributions, even knowledge share contributions around security protocols, around how organizations kind of package uh, their applications internally is all really great stuff that we can benefit from. Um, but yeah, as far as like code contributions, I know language packaging is going to be a really big focus coming up and having some individuals who have worked, you know, really closely and maybe, you know, the Maven space, the NPM space, the PIP space would be really beneficial to us. And do you have a, a reoccurring um, meeting, community meeting at all yet for Claire? We don't have a community meeting as of right now. Uh, we do a lot of collaboration uh, over Slack right now, but it's something that, you know, I think as we are going forward, it's becoming more and more uh, crucial to do. So we might want to put something together for that. Yeah, I think that when, when the transition hopefully takes place over to the CNCF, um, we'll probably get that done. And then there's the Claire Core um, link. Thank you. Um, but I think that we we do have that SIG page um, for Project Quay. Um, and if you want to share that again, um, Tom, and that, that would be great. And we'll come add the Claire little bit here to that as well. So to trying to figure out, you know, how to best onboard um, new community contributors and folks like that. I think the bug bash, um, which we're we're setting up, is is actually one of the a really good way to get started um, and to start getting getting yourselves involved in the community if you're interested um, and if there's features that are missing or if there's a feature way down that product roadmap, um, definitely um, make sure that that you uh, highlight that in your feedback and that might move things forward. But um, you know, also volunteering to help contribute on any of these things, um, please do. All right, and Hanks. Having, we're having some unmute issues here. There you go, Hank. Go for it. Try that, Hank. All right, we still can't hear Hank. We're having some un serious unmute stuff. All right. Another thing that I often get asked about is um, support for image signing uh, in uh, Quay, um, especially since uh, Quay.io has that ability built in. And uh, that's a very interesting um, uh, discussion because we are actually involved in um, some of the community work um, uh, that is revolving around making that available in, in the Quay project as well. I know that Joey's working 
um, actively on this upstream with the community around Norui. And maybe, Joe, you can give a quick update on where this is currently at. Uh, sure. So, uh, Quayo has experimental support for Docker Notary, which was the original signing solution that the community developed, or Docker developed and then the community sort of um, accepted. Um, however, over the last few years, there's been a lot of community discussion about the pitfalls and uh, problems associated with Docker Notary. And to that end, the community is currently working on a uh, new version of Notary called Notary V2. It's a working group. Um, there's actually a community meeting in, I think, eight minutes um, that meets weekly. So anyone who's interested, um, feel free to go search out the Notary V2 working group and take a look. But the high level description is basically because of this recognition that there needs to be something better, the community is working on something new. And so as a result, we are part of that working group. And as soon as the working group comes up with a, uh, you know, proposal and an implementation uh, for that proposal, then we will be working to adopt that. Um, but as of this moment in time, it's still very much in the development phase. And so given that and the lack of universal adoption of, of the original Docker Notary, um, we're taking the approach of let's contribute to the new version as opposed to adopting a flawed older version. Um, so that's the high level description. It means unfortunately that we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer um, to get a really good solution in place. Um, but since the whole community has finally recognized that this is something we should do, um, I'm pretty confident and excited about the direction that everyone's going. Thanks, Joey. Yeah. Uh, so let me just touch on the uh, <clears throat> ways to contact us. Again, as you've seen, uh, we're new to being open source, uh, and part of that growth pattern is figuring out uh, the best way to uh, collaborate with our community. And right now, Claire has a community. As I said, it, it does a lot of its discussions through the GitHub issues. Um, we are hoping that over time we can sort of consolidate the communities with Quay and Claire. Uh, so, you know, Claire questions are completely fine. Any operator questions are completely fine on the Quay SIG. The issue tracking, the JIRA that we use is for both projects, uh, both Quay, um, Claire, as well as all the operators. Uh, so if work gets done, even if there's an issue uh, upstream, it'll often be created, recreated as a JIRA. Uh, and yeah, so there is a Claire channel on Freenode as well. Uh, both the Claire and Quay channels on IRC are very lightly populated. Um, I would encourage you to use the Quay one, which is why I listed it as the only one, uh, just to sort of get everyone in the same room, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But if you ask a question on IRC, uh, for sure it'll get uh, attention if you put an email to the Quay SIG um, either for Claire or Quay or any of the other projects, um, it'll get seen as well. Okay. And there's one question coming in from one of the the channels, external streaming channels. Is um, is enhanced content coverage included in SCAP compliance scan like standalone OSCAP Podman? Anyone have an answer to that one? Does that make sense to you, Daniel? I think I um, get the direction there. Um, so, and the answer is no, uh, we're pursuing uh, a different um, standard um, for getting enhanced content coverage uh, in. So we are basically um, looking at our oval uh, V2 feeds as well as CVRF uh, data. Um, to get uh, a more comprehensive coverage on specifically now um, what is um, described in vulnerabilities uh, for Red Hat RPMs, um, and that's beyond the Red Hat server RPM repository. Um, so we'll, we're going a different route and using a different standard for that, not SCAP or OpenSCAP. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions out there, and I know you have another call in like 
four minutes. So um, we'll we'll try and if you can slide to that bug bash slide one more time and make it full screen. Comments. 